Hello, everybody. This is Joe Freudenberger, CEO for Oak Bend Medical Center in Richmond, Texas, coming to you today, Friday, July 17th, 2020, with a COVID-19 pandemic update. I am joined today by Dr. Ed Uthman, Chief of Pathology at Oak Bend Medical Center. And Ed is going to share with us, um, from a more educated standpoint than I can share, what we might be seeing over the course of the next six to 12 months in terms of whether a vaccine might become available to help us manage this pandemic. And if we were to have a vaccine, what that vaccine might or might not have as compared to what we would normally expect in a vaccine that is put out there to prevent us from getting the flu or what have you. So Ed, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, thank you. Um, you know, I the only thing that I will predict about this pandemic over in the short term is that we're going to have a lot of surprises. Uh, we've had surprises already. Uh, I think we sort of think in our minds, looking back on history, that there is some sort of timeline in which we identify the cause of a new disease. We develop a way to test for it and uh, treatments for it and then ways to prevent it. Um, and that's kind of the way it worked for HIV AIDS. Uh, except for the vaccine part, which has yet to materialize. But the fact that it worked pretty straightforward for that disease doesn't mean it's going to work that way for this disease. Uh, I fervently hope that there'll be effective vaccines for uh, the coronavirus, but um, I would have a very guarded prognosis of that. Uh, there's so many things we don't know about it. We don't know if it uniformly produces an antibody response, that is, where the body makes antibodies that can kill the virus and, or prevent infections. Uh, if it does make those antibodies, we don't know how long they last. And even if they last for a long time, we don't know if those antibodies, just because we can see them in a lab test, are the antibodies that can actually attack the virus and prevent it from reproducing. Mm. So all that is still to be determined. Um, so I would say hope springs eternal, and I have hope uh, that there that uh, our vast capabilities that is so much better today than it was in in the early age, uh, stages of AIDS um, will be victorious. But uh, I, I'm not going to make any predictions that it will be. So there is a lot of um, articles I read about vaccines going into late stage testing, which seems to me a remarkably fast timeline compared to vaccines that I've been exposed to over the course of my life. So if we do get a vaccine of some form or another, what likely will not have been done that would normally have been done, then what are the implications of that? Um, you know, I think there's such a massive effort that the stuff will be done. It's just going to be done really fast. Okay. But it's still going to take time to know the long-term effects of the vaccine. All right. Um, one problem is, is that it appears that this infection is, is not very straightforward in terms of its natural history. Uh, it appears that the virus itself doesn't kill you, but uh, the hyperimmune response to it or some sort of... Um, over response that the body developed to the virus is actually what causes a severe disease and death in that small proportion of uh, patients that get it. So when you're developing a vaccine with the idea of stimulating an immune response, mm. could you actually be simulating the course of a fatal uh, oh, wow. version of the disease? So that cannot be determined in the laboratory. That's gonna have to be determined on volunteers and um, kudos to the volunteers. Oh, good, good, yes. And, and there will have to be tens of thousands of them to have significant numbers. And it still may be a long time before we know if there are adverse effects or long-term adverse effects on vaccines. Now, when I talk about adverse effects on vaccines, I'm coming to you, make it very clear. I'm not any one of these people, these in my view, highly misguided and misinformed people that are against vaccines. Vaccines have been one of the greatest triumphs of um, 20th century medicine. And um, 
I believe in vaccines. My children got all the vaccines that were available. I got all that were available when I was a kid and continue to get boosters. Um, but we don't know uh, that vaccines are safe and effective until they're tested. And I hope this one is going to be safe. I hope it's going to be tested. I hope it's going to be effective. Uh, and we're going to find out, uh, but not today. Well, very good. Thank you so much, Ed. <clears throat> Ed is a member of Oak Bend Medical Center's board. He has been our chief of pathology for 26 years plus. <clears throat> is that correct, Ed? Uh, I believe it's uh, 30 years, 31 years. 31 years. Well, I was 26 plus. I had it right there. <laughs> He's a yeah. super guy, very well read, smart guy, and somebody that I would suggest everybody listen carefully to as his opinions are always well thought through. So the numbers for Oak Bend, we are sitting at 31 COVID cases in total, seven in the ICU, none holding in our emergency departments. However, we have now moved our COVID patients out of our emergency department. We still have holds in our emergency department. So the COVID patients are occupying space that would otherwise be used to treat other patients. So we had seven holds as of this morning. We have had another death from COVID-19, bringing us to 23 to date. We have 10 ventilators in use, five of which are deployed for COVID patients. Our ICU is full. Our protectable personal protective equipment is in good shape. And on a personal note, I have uh, continuing low-grade fever as well as a chest constriction that is causing the doctor to want to do a chest x-ray on me this afternoon. Hopefully, I can report good news. Following that, Laura, my wife, is asymptomatic and doing great, and my son and uh, my, uh, his fiance are doing well, uh, recovering. Um, I was asked a question, how can we have 11 ventilators in use and have only 12 ICU beds? And the answer is we can put ventilated patients in our emergency departments. It is a critical care unit. It is not our desire to keep them there for a longer period of time, but it is viable in the short term. And we have done that through the course of the last few weeks as our capacity has been constrained. In conclusion, those five simple rules to keep you safe. Number one, assume anybody in a group of folks might be knowingly or unknowingly infected with the disease, take proper precautions. Indoors, you are always at risk from both direct droplet spread within six foot radius, as well as aerosolized droplets that spread further than the six foot radius. The longer you're indoors, the more you're exposed. Minimize that. And when you're outdoors, maintain a social distance away from folks. The aerosolized droplets will tend to disperse in the air, leaving the bigger droplets to drop to the ground as long as you're outside that six foot radius. Wash your hands frequently and above all, and most importantly, stay positive. These tasks are not that hard to do, but if we lose our focus, they become impossible. Thank you very much. Have a good evening and say, stay safe. And that's it, Ed. Thank you. Thank you.